I'm Coots. And I'm Tank. Thanks for joining us for this week's movie review. Uh. It's a good one. It's Coots' pick, but it would have come up pretty quickly. Um, anyway, even if you didn't pick it this time, I don't think we would have gotten through 10 of these movie reviews no. without choosing The Rocketeer. Yeah, absolutely. The Rocketeer. Yeah. I love this movie very, very much. Um, so this is an interesting, unusual thing that I get to do. Uh, most people who know me fairly well, uh, know that I'm a pretty good gift giver. Um, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm good at talking, I'm very good at talking, but when it comes time for giving gifts, people realize that I've also been listening to everything, too. Um, a lot of people that don't make it to that level, they're like, he just talks and talks and talks, but anytime anyone else is talking, I'm, I'm equally good at listening as I am. Yes, at, this at, is very at talking, so, um, usually you, you, I get to show all the movie posters behind me um, and talk about how cool they are and how happy I am to have them in my collection. Uh, but in this case, none of these are mine. Um, I, I purchased all of these, <laughs> um, but they are all gifts to be given. And because we're doing this movie review and because we have this YouTube channel, I get to give these gifts to my family who are very, very far away and I don't get to see them very often. I've been holding on to them for a while and since we're, since you chose the Rocketeer, um, it's probably the only time I'll be able to display it. I haven't displayed any of these yet because they're all gifts. Um, so in the middle here, the Rocketeer and Back to the Future Part 3 are my youngest brother Cameron's two favorite movies. Of all time. Of, yeah, of, certainly of his childhood. I don't know if it's all time now, but it's absolutely his favorite two yeah. movies from his childhood um both of which are difficult to find and incredibly expensive yeah <laughs> um even though it's back to the future part three this i mean there's like 500 dollars on this wall worth of, worth of yeah. movie posters but um i love all the design elements of the rocketeer yeah. oh, it's a yeah. great time period yep. for it to be going down um <clears throat> And design-wise and artistically, uh, that that era of of time in America was was a good one for sure. Um, so these two, the Rocketeer and Back to the Future Part Three, are um, gifts to be given when, once I get back east to my youngest brother Cameron. The Lion King poster behind Coots is my brother's is for my brother's wife. Allison, um, she's a Disney fan, so awesome. that's one that I was bringing back. And then the the surprise, well, it'll be a surprise to all three of them, but this is an original, all of these are original. That's a 1994 original Lion King, that's a 1991 original Rocketeer, it's a 1990 original Back to the Future Part 3, and this is an original 1962. That's really, a, that's an original? 62, original 1962, rolled, uh, which are better than folded, rolled, um, motion picture, original movie poster of The Music Man, which my mom is a huge fan of that movie. Music Man is fantastic. It's a good, it's, 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 a, a, it's a great, great musical. It's probably my third favorite musical of yep. all time, but we watched it a lot yeah. in our house where I was also, 
I played trombone yeah. as a kid. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> pretty awesome. Yeah, so mom was a big fan of that. And then there's some great so I can sing the shit out of a lot of rows. Uh-oh. Like the Buffalo Bills that that uh, the male uh, the quartet, yeah, yeah, the barbershop quartet. They're yeah. called the Buffalo Bills, yeah. which is amusing. Um, but yeah, I, I sang all those as a kid. But the, so these are all gifts for my family, um, for my brother Cameron and so his wife en- Allison and my mom. So enjoy the gifts, y'all. Like. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do the review, but I, I wanted to at the beginning because I know once my brother, my mom, and his wife starts, they're gonna be like, but my my brother will start. He watches all our videos, and so he, he's gonna be like. Oh, you know, like yep. the moment he sees it while we're doing the intro, he'll be like, is that a Rocketeer poster in Back to the Future Part 3? Yes, it is, sir. And they're for you. Yeah, congratulations. That's awesome. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. badass thing. Man. Yeah, it's a cool gift. That's right? a really, those are sick gifts. I get to, like, whenever, you know, they, they watch it, is they'll, they'll be like, oh my god, really? Like, oh, that's great. So he's not telling you until you watch it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's up to, I, I'm gonna, I'll find out pretty quick when they do watch it, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. But yeah, we are actually doing um, the Rocketeer movie review, yep. and I'm glad that we are. I really, really like this movie. It was, uh, it's one of those movies that was on heavy rotation Yeah. Um, in, in my household. Uh, a little more, you know, some of our other reviews, you were saying it was 10, 15, 20 years prior. Was there still that 20 year gap, or have you watched it? within a closer period of time. Yeah, I actually happen to, well, when we do movie reviews, I we always watch them within the week that we do them. I try to watch them twice. Yeah. Um, this one I did. I watched it yesterday and the day before, but I had just seen it. It had been a long time since I saw it, and then I got Disney Plus probably year ago, a year, yeah. ago, year yeah. and a half ago, and I was like, The Rocketeer, oh my yeah. God, I haven't seen that in so long. So I've watched it twice in the last year and a half to two years anyway. Um, but yeah, I did watch it a couple times to, to prepare for our review here. But yeah, it, it's, it's, and you know, I mean, honestly, I hadn't, I don't think I had not seen it for 20 years. I did, I did, I had a DVD, collection. he's got, he's like the king of any DVD collection I've ever seen. How many, you have thousands. Yeah. Many, uh, multiple yeah. thousands. Yeah, multiple, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure out of a multiple thousands now. 2,500. Wow. Probably. Wow. We, I mean, they take up a lot of space. I, yeah. I got up to about 850 at one point, and I, like, I'm a big movie buff, and I used to rent them yeah. in, in college for a dollar a day. Yeah, but, uh, I think that was the big, I think when we were a kid, it was like the VHS tapes, and we always, we used to go to like this market, the little corner store, Yeah. but I think I rented one movie over and over and over so many times. The guy's like, seriously, you could have bought the tape from me. I'm like, yeah, it's all right. It was a buck every time. Yeah, right. But it and was the 45th time. He's like, you realize yeah. you could buy the box set for half the Right. Already, On right? top of that, he had a whole entire store of other stuff. And he's like, seriously, <laughs> you only watch the one movie. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. What was the one movie? Uh, it was The Golden Child with Eddie Murphy. That's random. Right? What a random choice. Right. Anyway, there's got a <laughs> lot of DVDs. Um, and I used to have a lot of DVDs, but they got too heavy, and I was the... Uh, I've moved a lot, and also, I also had the problem, yeah. like, walking into Walmart. They had the two for $11 bin. They and better, but now it's, now it's, the, it's the $3 crap bin, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. find Ram gems in there. Yeah, and you, you dig. I mean, it, I used to call it digging for gold. Yeah. Like, I would spend 20, 30 bucks and would end up with eight or ten, like, good movies that I was really excited to yeah. own. It's a and problem. And I, sp- I spent thousands of dollars on that DVD collection. I, I think if I got rid of my collection or I got the money back from that collection, I'd have, well, definitely thousands of dollars. You'll never get the money back from that. Yeah. That's it's another thing. I, I'm a natural collector. I have a movie poster collection. I have a, a vintage sports card collection. Right. You I can have make a money on all collection. Of those. <laughs> I can make money on all of those. And I realized probably about 2011 is when I sold the whole collection. Yeah. Um, I realized that nobody's going to pay for DVDs because everything's going digital. This is 10 years ago. I figured out everything was going to yep. go digital. So DVDs at some point, just like VHS tapes, just like real to real, like it's it's gonna be obsolete at some yeah, point. I, I, and he, he wants the hard copies. I don't fault him for it. I don't think I don't think that's wrong. If you are a person that does that, that's yeah. fine. But I was collecting them, and I was like, I'll never get my money back out of this. So it's not a collection; it's a hobby, and I don't have money for hobbies. Yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of like why I stopped. I think I picked up like six movies this week. 
I think. That's not surprising to me. Yeah. And What's it was the best one of those six you picked up? Psycho Gorman. What? It's a low budget horror film. And that's and the best of the six that you picked awesome. up? It's awesome. I like oh, it. Those other movies must have been awful. No, it's great. It's okay. They, they try to make it's like a Canadian he horror likes film. Everything. He literally likes everything. Not everything. I hated the Joker. Ninety-seven percent. I the hated movie. the Joaquin. Oh, that's right. I forget. He he actually doesn't like the movies that are really good. Artistic this is horror. true. This is true. Um, no, it was. It's a Canadian horror film, and um, I enjoyed it. It's kind of a throwback to the eighties cheesy slasher horror comedy stuff. So something that I enjoyed. You, you brought. Like, you won't like it. I you liked a B movie that's a. Canadian cheesy campy eighties horror flick that you made, didn't like the Joker. Reason. Yes. And you're a huge DC fan. Yeah. That's crazy. We're gonna have to get into that sometime. <laughs> but we're here to talk about the Rocketeer, which we both love. Yeah. Um surprise I told my mom we were gonna review this and she's like, I hate that movie. And I was really? like, What? Like the, the matriarch of my family. I mean that must have been the nineties much of it must have been torturous for her. I mean, in regards to the amount of... T it was, anyway. But it was like, in, the, in regards to the amount of times that we watched The Rocketeer, she doesn't like the movie. She said it was because she hates Neville Sinclair. Like the character? That's or what she actor? said. And I'm like, Mom, but you realize that's what makes it a good performance, right? right? Like, if they're trying to act like a sleazy, slimy bad guy, and he comes off as a sleazy, sleazy slimy bad guy that has no depth... Right. Um... That means it's a good acting performance. And, and he did a he did a good job at like being the creep, being the whatever. And at the end, you know, we'll talk about that in a minute. But sure, you're just like, damn, like yeah. that's. And I was like, when that came out about like at the end of the movie, yeah. I'm like, oh, there's some, you know, there's definitely more weight to this bad yeah. guy. Like, it's, so they 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 based that character, the Neville Sinclair character in. The Rocketeer, they based it on Errol Flynn. Which, which would makes make, sense. Which makes a lot of sense right. because the swashbuckling. Right, right. The you know, the movie. Yeah, you know. Like, filming the movie, I'm like, it's got a very Errol Flynn era right. feel. And I mean, it takes place in uh, L.A. Second movie in a row, L.A. Yeah. Um, and 1938. Yeah. We, we've been doing this, like, a lot of the stuff. Yeah, right. Been and the Fender Rabbit was L.A. in 1947. Yeah. And this is L.A. in 1938. Right. But, yeah, so... Uh, the character of Neville Sinclair, played by Timothy Dalton, was based on Errol Flynn. Yeah. And I remember Errol Flynn from The Seahawk. Yeah. A random pirate movie from like 1937 or 39. Right. And Robin and Hood. His thing Robin is Robin Hood. Hood. Yeah. He loved Robin Hood's his favorite. And, and that version of Robin that Hood That version. Yeah. That's that a one, good one. I have it on my list to watch it. Yeah, that one movies. has some of the best comedy moments in it and some of the best action and the, you know, the sword fights yeah. and everything about his version of Robin Hood. Is, is that what's called The Adventures of Robin Hood? I think is so. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but in doing the research for this film, did not know that Errol Flynn was a skeezy dude. First of all... You said he's kind of a, like a, you said he's, he's a major ass. Like, I didn't know he was. Apparently. Yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, it's, you know, 50 years before I was born. He right, right, right. He died in 59, yeah. 1959. But, um... Yeah, he openly like traveled the world outside of the United States purposely um, with a 15-year-old girl when he was in his 50s, um, closer to the end of his life. And I was like, damn, there were multiple rape cases, oh, rape from, trials that he him. had to go through. Yeah, oh. like multiple, at, at least two, if not more. I, I know about two, but one of which was statutory rape. Yeesh. And yeah. I was like... I had no idea. Like yeah, I, did, I did not well, know. Look at this one. And the best part, he was suspected of being a Nazi. In real life? Yes, he was actually suspected See, of being a Nazi. That I didn't know, which is which is creepy because like <laughs> because I mean watching him and it's like and he always plays the good guy and the yeah. hero and he's yeah, always the, the you know he's good always, looking dude right handsome fellow he's yeah. always that guy and yeah. like you would portray him as that so to find out the best guy is yeah. a total creep. And kind of a shithead. Like, yeah, you, apparently. It's really weird. Yeah, he, had, he had major, major drinking problems yeah. and drug problems, apparently. Um, sex and gambling. Like, all the staples and trappings. Like, he's he was susceptible to all of them, apparently. Yeah, so all the um, creepy shit you could have found. It was definitely in his one so in his yeah. bag of tricks. Yeah. <laughs> so, Errol Flynn yeah. was apparently a, a slimy... Slimy scumbag. Well, so yeah, he was suspect. He was never charged with being a fascist. He they never found any proof. But apparently, he was suspected of it, even though he had 
like left wing political leanings. It was odd. Yes. Um, so so there's Dalton, really no clarification on that, and right. now it's so 1959. So he Timothy died Dalton and, played him. Oh, well, yeah. uh, you know, his version. Yeah, Nelson Sinclair, which is the, yeah, but that was the... The, ba the background or character, yeah. he would, yeah, which the, he played it to a T. Now like that I that. think about, you know what they said, he's, because he opened, uh, Timothy Dalton says, like, I'm the third leading actor in Hollywood. Like, now it makes me think, I wonder if Errol Flynn was the third leading actor, because he probably was, right. behind Clark Gable and James Cagney. Right. And, so, I, and, at, and at that time, this is true. You know, so I wonder if right. Errol Flynn was actually also the third, like the third highest best, grossing right. lead actor, which is interesting. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, that I like the character. I thought I thought Neville Sinclair was a great bad guy, yeah. and I like Timothy Dalton. A lot of people like really don't like Timothy Dalton. No. I think he's a great actor. I like him in a lot of. He's done a couple comedy roles. He's been pretty good. He's done. Of course, he played a Bond. Two. Yeah, he had two Bond movies. Yeah. I, I I prefer License to Kill. Yeah, um, it's a good. I I liked him though. I thought he was a good Bond. He was, yep. you know, just British and and debonair enough to, yep. to pull it off. He but, too, but he though, pulled off. Mind. But he pulled off being the badass as well. Like he pulled off being a Bond. Some of them, I'm like, mm, you know, and I think he was one of. He wasn't my top two, but I think he's my probably my third favorite of the Bonds. You know, but I definitely didn't. I liked him. I, I haven't hated a Bond. I don't think, but I definitely liked. I him. don't think there's any Bond that I hate. No. But I think he. But I think his Bond was better than most people give it credit for. Yeah, I agree. And I think he's one of those actors that should be given more credit to being an actor. Like he's a solid actor. A lot of us are not Timothy Dalton fans, and I don't. Yeah. Get it. I don't. Yeah, get me it. neither. I, I. I. I think he's good. I'm. A, I'm. A, I am a Timothy Dalton fan. Yeah, so I. I like him. The 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 one real. Question I think I always had as a kid and even now like to do a little research to learn a little more Was who the hell is Billy Campbell and where right. did he come from? Right. Like there, it's if you come up with Billy Campbell you're like he's instantaneously recognizable because of playing Cliff Secord at the Rocketeer. Right. Um, and I'm like what else has he ever been in and it, the answer is not a lot like no. I always felt like uh, I, the other main thing that I remember him from is he was Jennifer Lopez's husband in Enough that the one where he... Late 90s or 2000s? Yeah, early 2000s. Yeah. But, like, that's the one where he, he was an abusive husband and she said enough and she trained to be a badass. And, and, and Okay, and, I do remember and, that. I think I watched it once. And, and he's I, great in it. He, he de here's the thing. It's funny because he went from being, like, the good superhero on The Rocketeer yeah. to being such an a-hole and such a creep in that movie. And it's like, dude, he's... He's a scumbag. Yeah, yeah. he's a complete, like, yeah. piece of shit. And yeah. I'm watching it going, wow. And I watched it and I went... <laughs> As it's physically just, abusive husbands are. Right. right. If you, but if you can go that way, it's like, man, you were such a good guy in The yeah. Rocketeer. You did your job well at being But such I an think asshole. that's what makes people good actors. Right. People that, like, I wanted to... When I saw... The first time I saw... Um, it was... I think I believe I saw Good Will Hunting before I saw Dead Poets Society. Right. I was like, oh, Robin Williams is an actor. Yeah, he's he's a world class, all time great comedian. But I was like, he can act the shit out of stuff. Yeah, like that was amazing. So I want to see. I have more respect for the guys that can be like the happy, handsome, charming leading man that's a good guy and a hero, and then because, do another role yeah. and be a horrible piece of shit yeah. that everybody hates. And I'm like, that's they call that range. Yeah, right. He's got that range. Well, he's like he's not just Sam the Rockwell. Though. Right. Sam Rockwell right. is that guy. He would he played. Um, Oh my god, what's the name of the character in the Green Mile? Oh, the creep guy. Yeah, yeah, the weird, yeah, I can't The moon pie, the, uh, yeah. the where he did the moon, like, he was such a horrible piece of shit in that movie, The Green Mile. No, he, and he's, he's been going, in yeah. so many good things. So many. We, we just brought up uh, Conventions of a Dangerous Mind earlier. He's yeah, that's, that's a great film. Even though even though you, you're you not a huge fan of Galaxy Quest, it's yeah, like, his character is so funny in that movie. It's because it's Sam Rockwell. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like you, it doesn't matter. You can have a bad script. You can have a bad shooting schedule. You can doesn't have a matter, bad director but, but, and but producer. But you can't un-get somebody to be a bad actor if right. they're a good actor. And here's the thing. He's he's one of those that slays comedy, slays his... He slays his, everything. Yeah, everything. I've never, everything. Seen, I've never seen him do a bad role. Yeah. Not once. Literally. Not once. Yeah. Yeah. So... But yeah, I mean, yeah, I was looking up some stuff for Billy Campbell. I'm like, I don't even remember that, or I it's don't remember that role. I always felt like he never took acting seriously, like, or else he would. Like, how how can you slay it in the Rocketeer and then just be like, meh? 
Yeah. And he was. And do you know what part of the answer to that is? He's the heir to the champion spark plug fortune. What? Yep. <laughs> He's loaded. He All was right. well, well rich before right. he needed to act, so he did not need to act All right. at all. Like, he's a well-known philanthropist. Like, he just goes around and does nice things for people and sets up foundations. He lives in Norway now with his unbelievably hot wife, not surprisingly. Um, he was voted, like, one of the top 50 beautiful people in the world multiple yeah. times, which isn't surprising. Yeah. Good-looking guy. Tall, dark, handsome, you know. Yeah, all of this stuff, yeah. Um, I strive to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that, that, buddy. No. Um, um, yeah, no, He's he did such a good job in this movie. And then I'm like, but he killed it. And then I and then I found out that it was like, a, I think it was like a 30 or $35 million budget, this movie. And it only grossed like $46 million. Yeah, it did not do well. No, it was like it, in the box office. They, they the, considered to be one of the biggest, and and like even though I'm it made a, it that. made money back at the time because but their their budget they were expecting it to be huge. So they oh, originally yeah. were talking because it came out for a comic book, The Rocketeer, right, you know, right, right. and they were oh, they were expecting it to be a trilogy. They were expecting it to be a franchise, and it did not do what they hoped. Like I remember as a kid, you had all the the taglines from the from the trailer, you had the stuff they played, and I'm like, ooh, this looks fun. And I read the. You know, I didn't know it was a comic or a graphic novel until after I saw it, and then I was a kid and was like, "Oh, we got to look it up." Yeah. You know, and I would, would go search at comic stores, found it great, great uh, graphic novel, mm -hmm. but it was like they were trying to push it as something, and it did not do anything. I guess. You know, well, I was I was surprised to learn that. Honestly, I was like, I thought it crushed. Yeah. I was like, I thought it crushed at the box office. Yeah. Nope. It was. It's, a, I mean, it's, it's considered it a flop. Lose, it's considered a flop. It didn't lose money, right. but it's considered a flop. Right. Did you know the guy? So the guy that wrote the graphic novel, Dave Stevens. Yeah. He's in the movie. You know where? No, I didn't know. He is. Which guy? The is guy. He? he is the guy when they're showing the test footage, the German test footage of the like the propaganda, the propaganda, packs, the propaganda propaganda. not the propaganda. Well, that. It turns into the propaganda one, but right. the first part where they're showing the test footage right, and they're right. trying to test and the guy blows up and he's on fire. That's him. That's him. <laughs> the, guy, the guy with the rocket pack on his back and the right. German like right. testing of the, the, the rocket pack. Right. He Dave Stevens, the guy who wrote the graphic novel, is the guy that gets blown up by the rocket pack and is on fire and they're like, No, 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 and they come up to right. like close the camera and then it goes into the propaganda one. But that was uh, apparently that was something that they were actually trying to do. Yeah, if the fashion, like the Nazi regime was trying to figure out how to have rocket packs. Yeah, I guess so there was, they could have the whole flying thing. soldier. That would have, yeah, the world would be conquered by Nazis and fascism. Right, if, if they had figured that out, there well, was, can you see if there's people don't realize how close? Thousands. There's like three, four, five different ways that Nazis were this close to yeah. literally dominating the world. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we would have been able to hold them back. I mean, as America, if they were able to uh, end England. Like to take over England to dominate the the British army, we would have been screwed. Yeah. Like I, I don't I don't think that would have been difficult to overcome. Thankfully, it didn't yeah. work out that way. But this is one of the. It's one of the first, not one of the first. Well, when I was a child, like in my childhood, I was like, oh yeah, Nazis, man, they're terrible. Yeah. You know, I remember the in the Indiana Jones trilogy, yeah, like the bad Nazi and like. Nazis are always the bad guy. Like, yeah. was, like the, the result of World War II and what they found afterwards and, and having Germany lost, they were like, this is great. We'll just, uh, I, I feel like movie writers and script writers were like, what are we going to do for bad guys? And somebody was just like, Nazis always work. Yeah, that's good. We'll make yep. them Nazis. Yep. Like they, everybody I, hates I'm Nazis. Sure it was, and it was like a solid like 90% of the time. They're like, I'm sure they looked and go, Nazis and yeah. fine. Nazis you have that, are good. Oh yeah, everybody hates Nazis. That guy, ooh, that yeah. works. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. instantly. But uh, yeah. Interestingly, so one of my favorite parts um, was because Eddie Valentine, the mobsters, right? They're yep. bad guys. Mobsters are bad guys. They yep. make money from drugs and illegal activities yep. and all that stuff. But a lot of people don't realize. I've done a lot of research on World War II as well. Yeah. One of the main reasons that our country wasn't like overrun by Nazi and like fascist sympathizers and Nazi sympathizers is because of the mafia. Yeah. They are not like, and it's, I love the part of the movie where they're like, Hey, 
He's like, I may not make it on his buck, but I'm 100% American. Yeah, that, like that I was like, that part that, that was right like, when that was right when he calls out the the yeah when he finds out they're not he's a Nazi. Yeah, he's a Nazi. Nazi. He's like, I'm paying you well. What what does it matter where the money comes from? Right. He was like, I may not make it on his buck, but yeah. I'm 100% American. Mobsters, gangsters, especially the Italian mafia, hated Nazis. Yeah. They hated them because. Benito Mussolini yep. was extremely oppressive with Sicilians where a lot of those families came from. Yep. So Mussolini showed up and was like, yeah, we're going to do it this way. And the mafia was like, the fuck you yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you're doing? And so all, like, the mafia was like, Nazis are evil. Yep. Like that, that's what, from Sicily and from Italy, all the, like spread all over the world, like Nazis equal bad. Yeah. And so during, like pre-World War II and during World War II, um, a lot of the Nazi sympathizers and, and spies and fascists in America were weeded out and found and handled in one way or another by the mafia, yeah. by gangs, but specifically by the Italian mafia. Because they were, I mean, it makes, our, our government used them because they are the ones with boots on the ground that know yeah. all the people in their neighborhoods and this person and this person was talking about this, that guy's a Nazi because he tried three people and they're like, Oh really? Yeah. And they went and they would get them and either hand them over to the government or handle they themselves, or they didn't make it to the government to right. be handed over. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, how much of the research? They, I was they, like, they, wow, that makes it's, it's, such, it's a trip. How much of how much they had a hand in basically aiding, you know, yeah. the, in some of the Nazi takes over, takeover basically. Yeah. It's like, and everyone was like, really? I'm like, yeah, the mob was it was as crazy as they were or whatever, the, you know. They were pretty hardcore about that, and and very they like, were not playing. Like, yeah, don't, and it's not, funny, and I and it's this is the truth. I wasn't alive during that time period, neither were you. But like when the when Eddie Valentine and the FBI or when Wooly, when they were both like, bah, 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 bah. and he goes, yeah, <laughs> bah, 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 bah. It's, it's like we just kept shooting. They were like, wait, are we on the same side right now? What yeah, is going the on? The FBI, like when well, they had the Weird. FBI and the okay. you know, mob yeah. says team up. Yeah, they're teaming and they're yeah. shooting at the Nazis, and they're like, wait. What? Yeah. And, and, and it's a very, it's a three seconds of that movie. But from what I understand, like hearing stories from, you know, grandparents, stage people yeah. when I was a kid, that's the way it was. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, we have our problems. I don't like you. To, you don't like me. But we're both American. And, and this is the problem right yeah. now. So we need to team up. And we'll, we can go back to this later. We'll we can revisit this here, but in a while. But yeah, right yeah. now, let's all go kill some yeah. Nazis. You know? Like, right. And this was, is not good. That moment the movie, I think, you know, that's towards the end. But you, you realize it's a yeah. funny moment. But it, it's, it's that. It's funny, but it's, it's accurate. It's, 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 and it's, it's a serious moment. Like, legit, yeah. that's how it was. It was like, oh, crap. Yeah. You know? Um, you yeah, know? this movie is is... Interesting in all sorts of different ways. Did you know that Billy Campbell? So Cliff Seaford, the guy who yep. does the Billy Campbell, he was the second choice who was for choice? Commander William Riker on Star Trek: The Next Generation. Really? He would have been great at that. I think he would have been fantastic. He looked. Think about it. Like Billy Campbell, Jonathan Frakes, who played Commander William Riker, and I'm like, yeah, they're certainly the same type. I uh, yeah. Tall, dark, and handsome. Right. I think Billy Campbell's the, the more handsome of the two. Jonathan, Jonathan Franks. He, he, Jonathan Franks killed. Yeah. That 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 role was an all time. That's that's his role. That's yeah. the role of his right. lifetime, and it was good. But I read that he was the second choice for Commander William Riker, and I was like, actually, I kind of want to know what that would have looked like. Right. Actually, you know that that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of interesting stuff. And I, about I, this I, movie. I mean, you know, I'm a Trekkie. I'm more of a Trekkie than a, than a what do we call Warzians. Well, that's okay, buddy. Nobody's perfect. Jesus. But <laughs> you know, I think it's. I think it would have been. Yeah. Now you mentioned that, that would definitely have been an interesting that version. Would have been interesting. Would have right? changed dynamic or added to it. We don't know. Yeah. You know how much would have changed. But so my favorite character in that, which is a standard, you'll see a theme as we go through all these movies, right? My favorite character in this movie is Lothar. The great big giant, the hulking, man. the hulking, like scary looking guy. Where's the rocket. Yeah. yeah. So that, <laughs> that story, like that's one of the best childhood memories. I bet that would be something that my brothers would say at my funeral, like when I when they were little, because this so this came out in June twenty first ninety one. So it was like just before my tenth birthday. Okay. Um, and my brothers would have been. Oh, they would have been five and three and a half. Okay. It was just a couple weeks after my youngest brother's birthday, so he was three. So five and three. 
there would have been. And I was about 10 and I was always a big kid. So one of my, one of the things that they loved the best, both of my younger brothers that I used to do is because I was, you know, five and seven, five and a half and seven years older than them. I would walk up to them randomly, like at some random time of some random day. And I would just the, grab them by the shoulders and I would pick them up and I'd look them dead in the eyes. I'd be like, where is it? Yeah. And then like, yeah. every time they'd be like, <laughs> yeah, and they would start laughing, and then every time they played along, they're like, "Where's what?" <laughs> and I'd be like, "The rocket," you know, you know and I'd shake them or something. They'd be like, ah, 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 ah. And they thought it was That's the funniest awesome. thing. But they were like five and three; they were really small, and I could just pick them up just like this. Where is it? That's so good. And they loved it. So it was the. He actually doesn't do that. Everybody thinks it's the scene where he goes to visit the mob guy that's nope. all in the cast. Yeah. He's actually picking up Cliff Secor. He's picking up the Rocketeer when the rocket is, uh, it's got the lampshade on it, so it looks like a lamp. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, where is it? Where's that's what? That's what he goes, boom! boom. Yeah. Blasts him into the, blasts his head through the ceiling. The rocket. Sure you got the right house? <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only person that that, that scene, too, is a... Uh... Is it right, you know, right when Alan Arkin's character is like, drop dead, you weasel? Like, the way yeah. he said that, it was just, it's like... Alan Arkin's great in that movie. Like, yeah. he's, he played that, you know, older uncle slash father figure yeah. friend that's a genius and quirky and weird. He killed it. Yeah. It was so, so good. He did such a good job. Yeah. That's yeah. what I remember Alan Arkin from. Is like this? That's, yes. That's, that's the thing. I, I, I think like, I remember the stuff like, later, but this is the first thing I remember going, this guy's awesome. He's hilarious. And I... I noticed him later. He's aged well too for being what is he, eighty or ninety or whatever. Yeah, eighty five, eighty yeah. seven. He, like, he, like he, he aged very well. I'm like, dude. Bro, like you know, good worked. for you. And his son's a great actor too. Adam Arkin's great yeah. too. Yeah, and it was uh you know, there was this. This was not my first introduction, even though we we talked about the introduction of Jennifer Connolly. She was in Labyrinth was the she first was thing. Labyrinth, she, yeah. That was the thing that I pretty much made her big, thing. but she came after that film, later she started doing a little, well, a lot more adult roles. <laughs> yeah, Requiem um, for a Dream is oof. just about as adult as a role as it gets. Yeah, she's she's a great actor. She gets overlooked a lot, but she's one. Yeah, of, she's great. she's one that she's done musicals. She's yeah. done a lot of. Um, she's done sci-fi. She's done action. Both of us were surprised to yeah. learn that she's married to Paul Bettany. We just she's like, the like, actual Wanda to Wanda Vision. Right. Like, like she's the one that that is Vision Paul Bettany's wife. Yeah. And I'm like, like since oh, th since 2003, they've been married for 18 years. We thought it was like about. I was like, is this a recent thing? And I'm like, yeah, oh, I know, right. yeah. I was like, Paul Bettany. I did not know that. Who knows? I was just like instantly. I'm like, yeah, they're both lucky. They're both they're both pretty and handsome. But this like movie, that, you know? yeah, for her in this movie, it's it's the most uh, prominent Hollywood depiction of a unibrow of all time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they were not. Can you imagine all of the um, the eyebrow threaders like now? watching that and being like, <gasps> like they, they everybody just wants to fix her eyebrows. I feel like in that yeah. movie, but I don't particularly care. I it's just, like, it's I just don't, I don't care. very noticeable. Is all I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not. There's no shaming going on or anything like that. I was just like, wow, it's very noticeable. I, I, I think it's. I think it's enough, but not enough for me to go. Mm. I was like, she's still smoking. Oh yeah, yeah. That white dress. Yes. Oh man, when she was at the dinner and then he takes her, like kidnaps her, chloroforms her and takes her back and then they uh, show the bed. That house, dude, that house, architecturally famous, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, see, that I didn't know. That's, 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 that's really cool. It's called the, I want to go there. It's called the Ennis House and it's in the Los Feliz neighborhood of LA. That, it's, 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 uh, that it's, house is really cool looking. Like, it's, 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 yeah, it's a really it's, cool designed house yeah. in general, but the like the main thing that stands out is the tiles, yep. which are the theme. And I'm an I'm a artist myself. I do geometric patterns and abstract designs. And I, I had to I paused the movie and took a picture of the tile the way it's laid out because it's it's geometric, and that's Frank Lloyd Wright as an yeah. architect is very known for that, and he's one of one of one of if not my favorite architect. But apparently he was a big huge asshole too. He was <laughs> a you know, he was not a good like he was uh since he was that detail oriented and organized like he was like no we're doing it this way. You yeah. know, like, well, have you considered that? Like, yeah, I didn't ask what you considered. He was just very, no, this is what's happening because I said so. Yeah. Kind of a guy that doesn't go over well with some people. I have a similar trait to me. Nobody's <laughs> perfect, right? Yeah. But they also had, like, the just the, 
the design elements in this movie are fantastic. The, the Frank Lloyd Wright, the Ennis, the, uh, Ennis house that they use for Neville Sinclair's home. Um, there's the, the motorcycle yeah. that, that uh, Cliff Secord is riding when he comes up when Malcolm's in the biplane and he's supposed to be the clown in the biplane. Right. Um, it's a 1929 Harley Davidson JDH twin yeah, cam. It's a great. It's a beautiful bike. Yeah. Like, it's so nice, and I'm like, ooh, look yeah. at that Harley. Damn, it's a 29 that thing. Yeah, that's a great. It was it was a badass. I, and I just brought him up, but I gotta say, Malcolm is adorable. Yeah. How did he's got like seven lines in the whole movie? Like, but he's Minus. just the sweetest dude. Like when he when when the Rocketeer goes up and grabs him out of the plane and like drops him in the big. He's so big. Yeah. <laughs> Like every time I'm like, it's because he's like, like, he's like, he's so he, excited. He's excited. It was like that scary moment, like, haha, I almost yeah. died. Yeah. But it was like, I also just got saved and I'm famous for four seconds. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know. He's adorable. Yeah. It he's, was, uh, you know, he plays uh, Marla Hooch's dad in A League of Their Own. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. He's, what an adorable character. He's like, I'm sorry. And everybody's like, that's okay, Malcolm. Like, yeah. Everybody loves Malcolm and you do too, but you don't even know why. Yeah, like that. That's again. That's what makes good writing and a good actor. That's like when he laughs like that. Yeah. Oh, I, I shit myself, but that was so exciting. Right, right, like that, right. It, it's it's every time I see it, I'm like, oh. Well, you like I think when he's telling the little girl the story about he was shot down by the Red Baron, and he shoots the little wheel, you know, from fixing the plane, and he goes and right in the Jenny soup. Yeah. And instantly he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Jenny. You know, and, and she's like, well, that's okay, Malcolm. Right. right, everybody. Like, he just right. messes things well, out, and then, he, and then he says, like, oh, it's with the fire that happened. Yeah, oh, right. I'm sorry. Well, you see like, the, he always is apologizing. Well, he gets <laughs> smacked by, you know, he gets yeah. smacked. Whack! With a, yeah, a uh, Margot Martindale, <laughs> early Margot Martindale sighting. That's one of, one of her first roles. She was in, um, she was in something right before this movie that now escapes me, but Margot Martindale is a, is a staple yeah. actress. Um, and, and she was great. She was great in it, too. I love the music. Yeah. The music, James Horner was the composer for the, for the musical score. Slayed it. Yeah. Like, the moment... So it opens, like, Walt Disney Pictures, right? Yeah. And then it's, like, the Rocketeer. And then from the moment you see the Rocketeer, it's, like, action. Here we go. Let's yeah. do this. And it's very, like, inspiring and hopeful music. Yeah. And then they open the doors, and bang, you're on the airstrip, and let's go. Yeah. Like that, and, and you're off. And this whole movie takes place in like the span of two to three days. Yeah. It's like two or three days, like the whole movie plays out. There, there's no yeah, there's, delay it's or all anything quick. like that. It's, there's it's not like fast. years in, in between. It's it's all, <laughs> you know, between the, the, the chase and within the first, what, five, ten minutes of the movie, you they find the rocket, they do all this, after the FBI chase, plane getting shot quick. down. Yeah. You know, but it's it's very fast moving. It's you surprisingly know? fast movie for a kids movie. And, it, and it, but, not, but, but but again, it's one of those like it's it has kid elements, but it still has a lot of dark themes. A lot of dark themes in it, and there's some definitely some dark you know hidden stuff behind, and especially some quote not like adult things said. Well, there's adult things, but so the first shot of anything right is Walt Disney Pictures. So it's a Disney movie. There's no right, debating right, right. it. It always has been. There's some that like movies that Disney has bought out that you can find on Disney Plus. But this was a Disney movie. Yeah, this is actually they a Disney production. It, yeah, like it was a Disney production from the rip. And the one thing that I'm going to bring up that this time watching it, you know, within the last six months or whatever, I was like, "Wow, that's a Disney movie. I can't believe they did that." W. C. Fields comes yes. up at dinner and Double says, <laughs> "Charmed." Double each other, and the camera's right. just like, right. it like zooms in close up on Jennifer Connelly's cleavage and boobs, boobs. Cle like, cleavage yeah. and boobs in that dress, and it like charmed, doubly charmed, the way he says it. charmed for each one of your boobs, and yeah. I was like, wow, I don't, I was like I did not, I do not remember that from my childhood. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm like, uh, this is this movie is rated G. I'm pretty sure it's it's PG, it was a PG. It was PG. Was it PG? It was a PG. Okay, still. <laughs> But like, not, there's a close-up shot of the leading It's right boob tits. cleavage, like, I legit. cannot it believe is, it. It is hardcore and the charmed. Wow. Doubly charmed. charmed. you like, whoa. Yeah. I did not realize. There's a lot of that. I mean, think of the, the close-up on the soup. And then to her dress. Yeah. With the soup on the dress. I'm like, wow. 
I mean, she's got a rocking body. Don't don't get me wrong. She's, I mean, she's still she's, hot today. She's fifty and she's yeah. Smoking. She's she's gorgeous. She's a beautiful, beautiful woman. I was just surprised that Walt Disney p- presents. So when they made that these tits, right? Like I was like, wow, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not upset to see that as a, as no, an adult, but but I didn't notice it as a kid. But as a I'm ten or like, eleven oh, okay. girl when it came out, like I was it, eleven. I didn't have the hormones to have that registered yet, you know. So. I yeah, did. I was well. I, was <laughs> I didn't get that when I was nine. Yeah, I was surprised about that. I, I, I did was. Not. I think I, I watched it with my parents, and my mom, I think, did one of those like you know, oh, really? guy, like, yeah. um, you know, like and I'm like, what? Mm. My, and my dad kind of did the the nudge. Yeah, right. <laughs> Check those out, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I did not. I I I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. <laughs> I really didn't. I was like. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. Just, okay. I well, think, that happened. I, then. I think I yeah. definitely remember mom trying to cover me, going, "Yeah, oh, oh, hey, no, hey, yeah. don't cover, don't cover." You know? Yeah. I, I don't There's a bunch. Of, I mean, that's really the only those those two parts are the only yeah. like, oh wow, parts in it. But the rest, like, there's there's, there's some like death, there's great lines. There's some death moments that are pretty hard, like like dudes folded in half and whatever. And like, yeah, they don't show the gra- I mean, you can see his foot by his head, yeah. but again, that's kind of what makes it PG. There was no like pool of blood underneath yeah. and there was no spine sticking out of his back there wasn't anything yeah. gory about it they're like oh my god he killed him right but like so one of my favorite parts of the whole movie and every time i always forget that this happens and every time it happens i'm like <laughs> i don't know why it's just one of those random things so it's a two-part sequence the Zeppelin, the, the Nazi Zeppelin that they're in at the end of the movie, they're like, this is the finest pilot in Germany and he's the best. And Lothar is outside fighting the Rocketeer, right? And he slides off, right? And then he comes down and goes, boom, and slams into the glass and shoots the pilot out like, <laughs> the door. Ah! Like, at the moment, they're like, this is the finest pilot in Germany. Like, you're in safe hands. Bye! Like, <laughs> you're just like, oh. <laughs> but... That, that, and I'm like, huh, it makes me chuckle. And then they pan back to the window that Lothar just smashed in his body, right? And he's flying, and he comes back and he just goes, boom. And like his head blasts off the cage of the Zeppelin every time. I'm like, <laughs> it's just because he's just like hanging there, like lifeless, because yeah. he just smashed through the window. And he's like, boom, and just blasts his face. And like his whole head is like, and just like you hear yeah. it, it's clear as day. You're like, oh, he just smacked his skull off that steel cage. It's yeah. hilarious. I don't know why I think it's so funny. He's not clean. He's a badass, dude. Dude, the Rocketeer like blasted him in the balls. And yeah. it was just, it didn't even affect him. Yeah. He was like, ah, and it hurt his leg. And I was like, what the hell is that guy packing? <laughs> Mother of God, I don't care who you are, how big you are. You're really you kicking the balls. It's, you're you're going to get yeah. He was just like, Ugh, holding that big ass wrench. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's awesome. Well, I like that. That guy's so tough. <laughs> I was like the big guys. I think when I, well, when I was a kid, that, I was like, that guy's scary. Like, he's a, just a beast. He was super scary, but somehow not terrifying for children. Like no. I said, I was nine, so I was past the point where I was like, oh, I'm not scared, right. you know? But my brothers definitely were not. They were three and five. No, I just and I always like, thought yeah, it was a cool. And the, their favorite thing was for me to act like that guy. The scary So he guy. wasn't a scary, he was a big monster tough guy, but he wasn't, somehow, he wasn't, wasn't scary, scary for children. Yeah. So interesting, do you know that the guy that plays Lothar, that big scary yep. monster guy, um, also in the movie without makeup? Who's he in the movie without makeup? Mm-hmm. No, I agree. So... You, you've never looked at this guy, because I, I watched it twice this week, and I read it after the first... First time I just watch it, I don't research, I don't read anything, I don't look at anything, and I just watch it. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. And I think about a couple things, I'm like, okay, next time, remember to do... You know, and then that thing comes up, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, this. So the, the, the second time I watch it, I do all, like, the research, and I Google and IMDb and all the, like, the poll facts right. and stuff like that. So one of my favorite lines from the movie that I had already like mentally noted that I wanted to bring up, which I will now, was when he's shooting through the cornfield and the two guys are like, and the one guy's like, big gopher. Yeah. That's <laughs> you him. know? The guy's, the, the, not the one who talks, but the guy standing next to him. That's him? That's ah. both on without makeup on. There's two guys yeah. standing there and only one, he's like, big gopher. I remember that. And that, that's hilarious. Yeah. That's a really funny line, but the guy standing there next to him with his arms crossed, like, that's, that's the guy. His name's Tiny Ron. Tiny Ron? Tiny Ron is his actual acting name. Wow. And so right. that's the Tiny Ron without all the Lothar stuff on is in the movie. And he's not the guy that says Big Gopher. 
but the guy just standing next yep. to him. Big over. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. That that was one of my favorite lines. That's I remember one. It, that was also in the trailer, and I think that I think when I saw that as a kid, mm -hmm. when it was on TV, and you're like, "Ooh, what is this?" Go for but it. I remember making that, making me laugh, going, "We gotta see this." Like, yeah, right. you know, I think it was even before it was the noticing of a rocketeer because it looked cool. But I saw it, I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, yeah, I remember that being funny, and it still is. It's there's quite another funny. one that's really funny uh, line that that kind of hit me more. I remember it from being a kid, like in a teenager. But I watched it this time and I'm like, oh shit, that's true. How do I look? Like a hood ornament. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh shit, he does look like a hood yeah. ornament. He absolutely yeah. does. He looks like a Jaguar. Yeah. Or so, you know, like he yeah, does, so absolutely looks like, like the helmet of the Rocketeer. Definitely looks like a hood ornament. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching that. And uh, yeah, here's it's, a question. So, Howard Hughes, at the end of the movie, right? Howard Hughes uh, brings him a plane so he can fly in national. Super cool. Really nice gesture. I loved that. Yeah. Called it Lady Luck. Yeah. It didn't get brought up, but it was painted Lady Luck on the yep. front of it because that's um, Jenny. Like, that's. That's what he calls her. Yeah, Lady Luck. Luck. Yeah. But uh, how come Howard Hughes didn't offer PV a job? Oh, Think like, about that. Like, you've done some Because it was like. Man, you added the rudder to the helmet. That's ingenious, and you made this helmet. And like they were talking there, having all these like engineering, flight, aviation discussions, and all that. And he was like, "Yeah, here's your plane." Yeah, I was surprised that like, they didn't offer. They, he didn't offer you anything. Did some to amazing TV stuff. Like, here's a contract. Like, yeah, yeah, nothing. Like, yeah. You, you, you would think that Howard Hughes would have like offered PD a job. Yeah, you know, I, he, I was surprised about that. But he did that, and he was more or less like, I didn't think of that, but it was like a cool, nice gesture. Yeah, right. Like, right. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I, you know what? I didn't really think of that. that right. Didn't, I guess now as an adult, that'd be some. Good job, huh? You like didn't job. offer him anything. Like here, let me like Iron Man does for that kid, right? You know, like he was like, man, this kid's really smart, and he's got a chance. Like I'm gonna set him up. Like he yeah. sets up his whole garage and like gives him everything he needs to right. to excel, right? Like that would have. I mean, maybe Howard Hughes didn't offer him a job, but like, wouldn't it be cool if he like opened up the hangar and had like a baller set of everything that they could ever need, and then like he just like refab his whole airplane yeah. hangar and. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I after, after that. that they stay broke. He's like, you're just yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you get a plane and that's it. You want to make money, you better fucking win. Yeah, yeah. You know? But if you lose, I'm taking it back. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, and I love that other sweet moment right at the end, right there. It was just a, it was a quick exchange right before Howard Hughes leaves, and he was like, I gotta ask, I gotta know, what was it like strapping that thing to your back and flying like a bat out of yeah. hell? Just the the way that was written, and he was like. Mr. Hughes, it was the closest I'll ever get to heaven. Well, maybe not. Yeah, that, was that a, look that over. That little, oh. like, five-second exchange was one of the things that yep. made the movie, like, so Well, touching. that exchange between him and Jenny is, like, instantly, it's like, and she gives that little look and a smirk, and it's just yeah. like, and you're like... It's very yeah. sweet. Yeah, it's it's a sweet gesture. It's a sweet... It's a sweet movie. Yeah. In, in general. And, and I just... I love this movie, man. There is a... Uh, I'm watching it uh, after so many years... I, I, you know, I still haven't watched it as much as the other classics, but I've watched it quite a bit. And I will say this much. For me, it still holds up in a, in a special place for me. It's still Absolutely. a great movie across the board. It like, really is. There's really only, like, a couple of things that I really despise about it. Yeah. I think it's nasty... I, I get it. Like, it's a luck thing, and it's, like, part of that time period in movie, and God, but... I have an issue with people sticking chewed gum on shit. And he does it throughout the whole movie. You remember it from him sticking it on the rudder and then PB taking it off and throwing it and then he crashes the plane. Right. right? So it's like supposed to be a good luck thing. And then there's a hole in it and he's so like, he's, and he's like, hope your luck like, don't run out or yeah. Ugh, yeah. Let's see this rock hole. And I'm like, oh man. First of all, that's somebody else's gum. Like, anybody who touches somebody else's chewed gum, I'm like, oh, I'm not even a germaphobe, honestly. I'm not one of those people that, like, walks around and sanitizes their hand 900 times a day. Right. I'm not that guy, but I'm like, oh. Like, where's the... Isn't it in California where the gum wall is? I think so. But yeah, it, and, like, it, people I, no. take pictures in front of it. It's very colorful. I get it. But it's a massive wall that people just walk up to and, like... I have no desire to spit my gum. It's so nasty. It's so gross. But... People don't realize, like, he does it throughout the whole movie. Yeah, he does. Like, when he's walking, he walks up to the house, right, the girl's house, 
um, when he's going oh, like to the, pick up the Jenny. women's home or whatever. Yeah, the women's home or whatever. And he like walks up to the door to knock on it. And he was like, and like sticks it on the window, like yeah. next to. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Like, just if you're a gum chewer and you have to talk, like, stick it up in, in like, next to your teeth and your gums. Like, you don't have to be like, well, let me stick this to something so somebody eventually will have to clean it up. Yeah, well, I never understood that, like, in school and people would stick it to Dude, I literally, this is no, this is not an exaggeration. Multiple times throughout my life at many different levels of school, I would be the kid, like, underneath, yeah. looking at all the desks. And I would choose the desks that had the least amount of gum stuck to the bottom of it. Yeah. Because it's nasty. I don't get it, and especially, especially in the world we're living in now. Like, I thought it was gross in the 80s when people would do that. Like, nasty. Yeah. My friends would do that, they'd chew gum, and they're like, we're not allowed to chew gum in class, you know? And then they'd be like, and I'm like, dude, throw it in the trash, man. Yeah. Like, not only that, like, so many times I've seen people chew gum, they'd be like, and then stand up and take the gum wrapper and go throw it in the trash. And I'm like, why would you not put the gum in the wrapper and then throw it in Why would you stick it to It's so nasty. Yeah, oh, and yeah. he does that throughout the whole movie. I'm like, oh, yeah, he does it about four times. I don't like so. that there's a chewed piece of gum that plays a central role in this movie. <laughs> oh, it's they, nasty. Should, they should just have that in the credits as a chewed up gum. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Cliff's gum, you know. Or I just have a, I just, it's Beanins. Yeah. Beanins was the one. Yeah. Like, that was the, the. It actually was like Beanin's gum was the pilot's yeah. gum. Like, and that was a real thing. Yeah, like it was a superstition. To like stick gum on your plane as good luck, and it had to be beans. Yeah, and I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. I gotta tell you, uh, secret fantasy of mine. I don't really think I'm not sure I've ever told anyone this, but I desperately want to fly. Oh yeah, I've always wanted to. I mean, not necessarily like the Rocketeer, because by the way, scientific. I'm not a I'm not a aero, aerospace engineer, and I'm not a physicist, but straight up. The reason that rocket packs don't exist with fire is because they will melt the lower half of your body with the heat coming off. Of I, like, like, the there's no fire. way if you have a rocket pack that's shooting <laughs> fire this way and your legs are this way, it's just gonna melt the hamstrings and the skin like right down the yeah. bone. It would if you bend your knees two well, degrees, you lose your feet. Like that that thing is so hot. There's no way. And they they talked about they briefly touched on oh there's a double walled cooling system. Great, but that doesn't account for the massive flames shooting, shooting back, yeah. projectile flames shooting out the back of it. It should just melt the lower half of your I body. think it was, that was something I didn't think about as a kid, but again, right. I, I brought it up as an adult. I'm like, I look at him watching and go, wouldn't he lose yeah, his legs? You can't, yes. Was the answer answer his gaps yeah. be gone? Like, yeah. You know, yeah, it would definitely melt you. And at least <laughs> like, burn your clothes off? I mean, you'd be but like I mean, flying around naked if it didn't I'm talking, burn. like, I would love to fly one of those Spitfire style planes, the GBs. Yeah. yeah. The GB planes, those things, I would love to do, so, to be able to do aeronautical acrobatics. Yeah. Like, oh my God, that'd be so much. I, I, I have a strange reaction to extreme adrenaline situations. Like people do that for adrenaline rush or they don't do it because they can't handle yeah. the adrenaline rush. For me, like when those adrenaline situations happen, I go into like a transcendental, like calming meditative state. And I believe that it would be the same way. It might be, it's, it's, it's like your peaceful zen moment is doing some crazy stuff like that. For because me, when it comes I'm to planes, scared of heights. So oh, yeah. I love yeah. flying. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. I enjoy it now as as an adult, but I'm still like, we're off the damn ground. Like yeah. three feet, I look down and I'm that guy that instantly, as soon as we take off, Oh yeah, that's yeah. me. And then until I land, you know, and I'm like, all right. Wait I'm on. very good at like relinquishing all control. Like if I'm in a plane and I'm not the one flying it, I have no control of the situation. Yeah. So all it's going to do is pucker up my butthole and fuck with my blood pressure. Yeah. Like, so I just don't. I'm just like, okay. You, all right. Same it. thing in the hospital. Like when people are like freaking out and tense, like get me out of here. I hit the hospital. I'm like, the moment I hit the hospital, I'm like, oh, okay, now I can relax. Yep. Do what you I have do. exact opposite responses to these situations because I know that there's nothing I can do. Yeah. If I'm in the hospital, I have a serious medical problem and I need the advice of the experts and I am not that. I have a good bit of knowledge, but not as much as doctors and surgeons do about the human body. So I'm like, okay, well, all you should do now is relax because there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. You're not in charge here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with that. And, and I do the same thing on planes. And so I, I've always wanted to, if my father sees that, sees this um he'll be like really i didn't know that he'll be he was a flight instructor yeah 
So uh, for for years, that was something he was very interested in was flying, and I I have always wanted to fly. I love like for fun, just randomly, I will watch like drone videos just to get that perspective. Mm. I'm always just trying to find another perspective on anything, pretty much. But I just want to I just want all the perspectives. So if we're on the ground all the time, I want to be up in the air. Or like I want to know what's under the ocean, but that's the like if you could fly or you could breathe underwater, which would you choose? I'm a water sign and I love the open water, so everybody would think I would want to breathe underwater, nope. but I would definitely want to fly. Yeah, I've always wanted to fly. I love those old planes, like the GBs and the, the those little aerobatic acrobatic planes. I, I, I would love. I I, I do. Fly. I do think that uh, that moment the acrobats are going on and then Malcolm's you know yeah, yeah. Plane. Oh, but but I love all the you know the guys like. Like, what are you, an idiot? And he's like, he's like it's all part, part of the, the show. show yeah, right? <laughs> part of the show. Folks, <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, he's freaking out. Yeah. He is freaking out. You know, when they see, sure. you know, and then they, they, they see the glimpse of the rock here fly for the first time in that moment. That was, a, that was a moment for me as a kid. And still as an adult, it's still like, ooh, you know, like, yeah, that moment, you know. And I, do, I love it. I love, I, it. Think, I love it. I think immediately afterwards, too, after, like, you see all of the press running to try and that's a flying man you know and it's yeah. like that old and then it, you know and then it really like he looks because you know what how about the rocketeer go with that boys you yeah know? he's the one that actually names it and he's like a, he's a slimy scummy yeah. character and nobody really likes that guy either and he's the one that names the rocketeer right right and then there's rick overton in the south seas club later and it's like a cheesily delivered line but it's perfect he's right it's the rocketeer yeah the like, like, <laughs> every time i'm like oh man yeah, it's it's that cheesy moment in the movie, but it's funny. It's it works. It's true. You know, I do like the fact that when he when Cliff Secor brings up the Jenny goes, you know, brace yourself like I'm the Rocketeer, and she's like the Rocketeer. The Rocketeer, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you read, read the, the papers? papers? <laughs> I've been working all day. You know, yeah. <laughs> funny. Like that. Yeah. That was one of those moments for me. It's it's pretty funny because it's like everyone in that well, at least in the town. Isn't that knows. funny though? Like what a what a real like listen. I'm a hero. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I have no idea. Who I'm Spider-Man. So like, oh, well, well, oh, well, that's right. anticlimactic. Yeah. Awkward. Is that? Would you be instantly let down? Like, oh, oh, well. Oops. Uh, yeah. Right. Never mind. We'll skip that. All right. So, uh, what is your rating of the Rocket Rocketeer? Rocket one ten. Out of, um, one out of ten. One out of ten. I'm gonna go with a solid eight and a half. So I'm, eight, go, eight and I'm, half. I'm gonna go with an eight. Yeah. I'm, I'm rating the Rocketeer as an eight out of ten. Four stars out of five. Yeah, I, I think when you do it that way, I, I think it's it's still to this day the way it was shot. Joe Johnson as a director, yeah. he didn't direct a whole lot. He did a bunch. You know, he was always either a producer or you know he did uh, a lot of the other camera stuff on the on the film. But he was he only directed a handful of things, and this is one of them. And uh, it was he did a, a great job. It, it, it Put shot it together very well. Shot beautifully. Uh, yeah. Some of these characters for the first time are, are just up and coming. Love the sets. Great. The sets are beautiful. The, the clamshell, the yeah. singer coming in, that, that's right. super cool. South Seas um, Club. The way, you know, and I'm looking at the special effects from 1991, watching The Rocketeer, it still looks really good. Held up really well, yep. None of, yeah, the, none of the effects are cheesy at all. Right, it's not like over-the-top CG. They were still just really getting into that starting of the computer age and, you know, using the CG... Um, this is pre Jurassic Park by yeah. a couple of years, yeah. and Joel Johnson was a producer on the Jurassic Park films. Why not? Yeah, he was doing that. He actually directed Jurassic Park three. Uh, he's a director, not Spielberg, but Spielberg kept producing everything. But Joel Johnson did that, and uh, yeah, I thought it was just beautifully shot. The cast is solid. There, there isn't a bad person in the cast. I remember as a well, I mean, there's always. You can recast things and always come up with better choices. But right. There's, a, well, lot of, there's I, a lot of really good players. I like, like the, the FBI, you know, the way that, the, with Cliff Secord and the... the yeah, the, that know, was great. The, the little rivalry they got. He's like, oh, time. I gotta punch him in the face again to get out of this room. Like, right. that was cool. <laughs> you know, I just I think like that again, when he punches the FBI for the first time, the little, the little short guy's like, well, maybe, maybe I had it coming, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, oh, uh, when I was a kid, I specifically remember... Being like, and I knew it was a movie and I knew it was fake by that point. Like I said, I was just about to turn 10. Um, but I was like, oh, that's how the Hollywood land, that's how the land got knocked out of the Hollywood land. So right, right, right. Like, yeah, and that's obviously, it's definitely not that. Right, but, but, I, I, was but like, I as a oh, kid. okay. Yeah, that was something. <laughs> like, that, was something that, that seems reasonable. <laughs> That's that as a kid, I was like, oh, this is from that time. Oh, that's yeah. definitely an yeah. Oh, cool. I went the yeah. same thing, 
And I assume that's how they got rid of the Hollywood land. Yeah. You and know? I did look, you know what, it's been like 15 years since I did look it up, but I actually did look up what happened to it, and I really, now I can't remember. So, I'm going to go look it up again. And yeah. More. Uh, did you know they now have a Rocketeer cartoon? Yes, I heard that. I, you know, this is one of those movies that I was really surprised they didn't make a sequel to. Yeah. In the 90s. Now I understand financially why they didn't. Right. Because it was, like, it just made the people their money back. And then a little bit. Like, right. I, I think it's now it's getting more popular again with, with streaming. I think it's a cult that. classic now. Yeah, it definitely like, has its cult following. They have a... Dis, it's, a it's on... Uh, Disney Plus. Disney Plus or Disney, Disney Kids, I think. Or it's probably Disney, 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 Disney Junior. Yeah. And it's, but it's a female that does the role as the, the Rocketeer. Rocketeer. And, okay. and, and, and here's the thing. Uh, Billy Campbell, who was Cliff Secord... Yeah. He's a voice in the cartoon, Is he? As, as, but as David, um, as David's accord. So it's like mm-hmm. he plays the dad of the Rocketeer, which is kind of cool. So, that is kind of cool. Yeah, so it's, but it's, it's like, it's Disney Junior. Well-known rugby guy. Him? Yeah, Billy Campbell's a rugby wow. guy. Yeah, he played for uh, Chicago Lions, RFC. He's, a big, uh, he's, he's not a small guy, I believe. No, he's, he's like not. He's, it, yeah, and he played for uh, Santa Monica Rugby Club, and he also played for the Las Vegas Rugby Club. See, that I did not know. Yeah. That's cool. I'm a rugby guy. Yeah, he's, so he's, I, when he's I learned that, I'm like, ooh. Yeah, he's big rugby. We record. probably have something to talk about. Yeah. And now, like seeing current pictures of him, I swear to you, I have seen that man in person. I here? cannot. Re- yeah, here in Las Vegas, I do not know where, but it's one of those. If you live in Las Vegas, this is the place that if you go anywhere, pretty much um, any public place, and you walk around for ten minutes, you'll be like. Where do I know that person from? Yeah. Because like everybody comes to Las Vegas at some point, but well, there's a lot of times where you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Like there's this person just well, walking it's, through. It's oh, look, it's Dr. Yeah. Dre just walking through the Mirage. Right yeah, now. like I said, I saw Coolio last week. And then, yeah, he said he's you know, Coolio. Yeah. Nicholas Cage is here now. He's a bunch of dudes. Caleb Landry, I met. Um, there's a, yeah, just a lot of actors. I met, um, oh my God, what's his name? Oh, uh, is it John Cavanaugh? Who plays the Punisher? On Netflix, who's Shane from The Walking Dead? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. John um, John Bernthal. Ber- Bernthal. Ber- John Bernthal. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, he was hammered. Yeah, hammered. I heard, like I heard walking was, around. I heard he's a decent stuff. dude, but I heard he was super nice guy. Yeah, he was really nice. Guy. I was working at uh, Hogs at the time. I was at the door. It was like a random yeah. Tuesday, but nobody in the bar, right? And he's like cross stepping, like walking down Third yeah. Street, I, and he was like, "Hey, man. Hey, hey." I'm like. Hey, John, what's up? He's like, dude, I need your help, man. And yeah. I was like, what's up? And he's like, had Tim's on that were untied and like boot and like a wife beer that was a little tattered and jeans. I'm like, man, you'd think that with the success that he's having, he'd be ready to use you shipping. Was that right at Punisher or was it right before? It was just before. So post, just still, before uh, Punisher. Post Walking post, Dead. Post Walking yeah. Dead, pre Punisher. But I was like, I definitely know that. First of all, he's like five foot six or something. He was like, he was like up to here on me, and I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, did not know you were that short. A lot of, a lot of actors. Yeah, I, I, my but yeah, he walks up and he was hammered, hammered. And he's like, "Bro, I need your help, man." And I was like, "What's up?" And he's like, "I just can't find my room." And I was like, "Oh, where, where, where are you staying, man?" And he was like, "The downtown Grand." And I was like, "Well, I got good news for you, and I got bad news for you." And he was like, "Give me the bad news first, and I'm like, you're not there yet." But the good news is. This massive building that's 80 feet away is the downtown man. He's like, oh! <laughs> he's like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'm yeah. like, have a good night, John. He's like, thanks, bro. Thanks. Yeah. And like, was super nice about it. Yeah. Like, but he was shit based. It was, it was funny. I, I think, was like, man, I'm glad he only has to go to the, I'm glad he answered the downtown grand because yeah. he would have had some trouble stumbling to see El Cortez or something. Like, I, I'm an old, I'm a big wrestling fan, you know, and my, one of my favorites is Rob Van Dam locked into Hogs. Oh, I met Rob Van Dam. And he was yeah. nice. He was super nice super guy. Cool guy. Yeah. But he was like, he's yeah, very quiet. Once, his, 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 he, he was nice, but I, I walked, he walked up and I was just like, RVD, oh my God. Right. Man. And he was like, he's like, that was cool, man. And I'm like, and he was like super nice yeah. and super chill. Congratulations at the 7,000th time you've yeah. seen it that year. <laughs> that today, but, like, yeah, you know, but I was, I was a big Rob I'm not Van a wrestling Dan. guy, but I definitely no. knew who Rob Van Dam was. Yeah, I was he's a, a big, dude. yeah, and he's, he's, he's a nice guy. He's yeah. actually like legitimately also a badass, like knows his martial arts and stuff and like, He's awesome, yeah. but he was like one of the nicest dudes, and he was super cool. And not, he wasn't like ridiculous about me like doing the Rob, the yeah. Rob Van Dam cheer. Yeah. Like he was super cool about it. So Rob Van Dam, you're an awesome dude. Thanks. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you do see definitely see some celebrities around here, I'm sure. A you bunch. know? But, uh... I, yeah. Awesome movie. This this movie to thank growing up. I'm so glad you chose this. Thank you. Like um, I, I I'm 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 happy for. Uh, and it's a great yeah it's a yeah. great it's a great uh, opportunity to give gifts to my family in a different way. And there's more. I have more. I only have four spots on the wall, right? But there's some more posted. Like my other brother, I have I have stuff for him too. We're we're not mentioning um, that right now. No. But Big, keep it a surprise. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Congratulations, and I love you guys, Mom. Cam, Cam, Allison. Um, good so, stuff. Good so stuff. Those are all yours. Man. Those are gifts to be brought I'm, to you. I'm happy to brought bring this one, man. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I revisited, it, revisited, and uh, I was fun. not expecting you to say like we're gonna review the Rocketeer. I was like, oh man, I did not see that coming. Really? All right. I did not see it coming. So yeah, this time it's it's my turn for the pick, and uh, the next movie we're gonna review is The Last of the Mohicans. Ooh, one of my favorites. I love it. It's got I, something for everybody. God, admit it's been. Probably a decade or more. Yeah, man. It's been a good six weeks since I've watched that. <laughs> so it's six weeks. I don't watch that. I don't think a year goes by that I don't watch it. Yeah. I love that movie. It's, it's got, it's, that movie is deeply embedded into my life in multiple different ways that, that we'll talk about when it yeah. comes up. I, I definitely want to check that one out. It's, it's been, I remember oh, it's it, good. I've seen it a long time and I remember it going, it was an awesome movie. Yeah. I just haven't watched it in probably, probably a decade, maybe a little more than a decade. Yeah. But it's as I remember, movie. it's a fantastic, fantastic oh, it's, movie. It's a great So I'm, I'm very excited to watch that one yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, so, I don't know. so thank you for watching uh, our movie review on the Rocketeer. Yeah. Thanks I, for I, I think us. you liked it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. That I makes me happy. happy. I, I'm glad you didn't look and go, God, I hate this movie. It's, I'm right. curious to see your, you know, your take on these movies, especially the ones, I, I know there's a couple that I, I'm already like, I know he hates it, I'm gonna pick it. Yeah, so I, I've got a couple in mind, but I'm gonna try not to be complete ass to take, yeah. so. <laughs> Thanks. You know. <laughs> I'll probably so I'll hold off on reviewing Joker. Ugh. From 20, man, I don't understand that. That's a great movie. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us for our review of The Rocketeer. I'm Coots. I'm Tank. And uh, please make sure that you like and share and comment on our YouTube videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also follow us on our Facebook page, Radio Rhapsody with Coots and Tank. Yep. So we'll see you next time, kids. Peace.